Right, I'm set up here to do this testing. I've got a ground clip on, I figured out what the test points are. So I'm just going to go through, I've got the tablet here in front of me with the test points listed on. So I'm just going to go through them in the order as listed on here so I don't lose myself. A couple of these are on IC pins, we've got an IC pin here which is pin number 3 of this one here and pin number 8 which is there. So I've got probing to those two pins as well, which is why I've got the pointy probe. It's going to be noisy, sorry. Three. Four volts, interesting. 704, this one here. That's got five volts. 705, it's got five volts. 707 pin eight, it's got five volts. So that one there is interesting, why is that only for four volts? Why is that? Uh, 700, 4.5 volts. 701, 4.5 volts. 702. 4.5 volts. <sighs> Thank God. <laughs> I think that beeper is supposed to be going off because all the front panel is all flashing. So it's called the BLT, blinking light test. So I think it is supposed to be doing that, as irritating as it is. Pin 3 of U707 was only 4 volts. The 4 volt ones I'm a little bit concerned about. 4.5 less so. I would have thought 4 volts would be a bit strange. I wonder if there's a waveform there. If there's a waveform, I might explain it. So the next stage is to clip this test point TP704 to ground and to probe on TP700 and check for a certain waveform. After finish getting this set up, then we'll come back and I'll show you what I find. Let's see what happens. I'm going to turn this on. It's probably going to make a racket again, I'm guessing. There's the waveform. Okay, what are we getting there? Two divisions and three divisions. That is looking just about perfect actually. There's that and there is, I hope you can see, the waveform on the tablet which is basically correct. So it looks basically correct. It's even got this little down spike there below ground. That's not the words I'm looking for is it? But anyway, <laughs> the waveform looks correct. It looks very close to what's in the manual actually. It's actually surprisingly close. It's probably one of the closest ones I've seen. So that looks good. Next one. Well I've now changed over to move the short onto TP705 and I've now probing on TP701 instead. Let's try this. Oh, it's triggered already. Don't want that. But that looks the same anyway. That's fine. I'm not going to wait for it to start beeping. That looks the same. That looks good. Okay, I've now changed the setup. I've had to put a little grabber on the IC707 pin 8 to ground that pin out as per the instructions and then measuring at TP702 for the waveform again. So let's do this. It's there. It looks the same. That's fine. All right, so now we're on the next test, which is test 10. So I've put the jumpers back to normal wearing conditions, that sort of stuff, taking the links out. I've got the oscilloscope hooked up still, which I need to check in a minute. It says to run a control routine on here so I've got to go through put some commands in. Hopefully I can figure those out because it's not particularly clear because I'm not used to this unit yet. I haven't used it at all. I've got to try and figure out where everything is. So let's power it up. Well, that's not right, is it? It's glitching. Okay, what's wrong? What have I missed? Let's try this again. I just reseated that uh, a40 card, I think it wasn't quite right down. That's better. Okay, back to where we were. That's what it was. So we have to do preset. It's got free running flicking over here, it's doing something. Test select. Okay. Define test number. Define no. I don't know where this is. Where these controls? This glitching is interesting. Where's test select? I'm going to, have to come back. One eternity later. So, figured it out. The manual wasn't very clear. It looked like it was in a different sequence, which it actually was. I did a search for one of the bits of text in that, and it actually looked like a different format somewhere else. So, the preset to obviously go back to preset condition. Mode. Down the bottom here, we've got test select, and we need to do define test none. I need to do one, two, one, and then enter. You have a waveform on the scope. Is that what I'm supposed to get? 
start continuous test that one there that looks like what's what I needed yeah the formatting on this is awful so you can see here that really did not look what I pushed it was supposed to be preset then mode then test select define test number that then that then that then that then that <laughs> it's like no <laughs> no well we got there and there's the scope view let's just see if that looks like what it's supposed to look like um, it pretty much does yes we've got three downward spikes and a bunch of noise so that appears to be correct voltage levels look about right it's just above the second division so yeah that's all fine that looks right Okay, next test. This is another keyboard test thing. So I put the cards and everything back in again. So it's all fully complete again. So I should get back that, that uh, 1100 error again. So you have to go through a test mode once more. I just finished booting, preset. So it says front end programming error detected. So you want to do preset mode, test select. Now we know where it is. Define test number, which is that top one. I want to do test number 12. Oh, there we go, up top there. Just there. Does just show it. Enter. Then start single test. Test 12 is complete. That's it. Test 12 completes no error codes. Test E is complete. Test F is the next thing. So that looks like that's that stage finished. Let's move on to the next test, which is test F. So we can stop that test. We've done that one. Define test number, we'll do another one, we're already in there, so we can just go to straight to the next thing. So test 13, we'll just pop up over here, enter, start single test. Test 13, complete, no errors. Now we're going to do 14, so define test number 14, enter, single test was it? Yes. So test 14 is in progress. It's going to take a little while apparently. Then after that we've got to do test 18, exactly the same start single test. There we go, it's finished. Complete, no errors. So now we're going to define next one, 18. 18. Enter, start single test. Another slow test apparently. So if everything passes with no errors, which it has done, we have to move on to a next test. So I've got to pull cards out again and use extenders again. You have to take out the A20 ball, stick it on a riser card, remove the A50 and A15 assemblies, and then run through some test procedures on here the same way. Isn't this fun? Right, so I've now put A20 into a riser card. I've removed A50 and A15. So we're now ready to do another test. So apparently I have to do preset mode, test selection, define test number 122. Oh, look at this, we've got this RAM code on the bottom here now. RAM, you see it? Interesting sleeping and self test. That was interesting. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, A, B, C, D, E, F. All the RAM chips are bad apparently. It's not liking something. Curious. We can't do a test like that then, can we? Okay, back to where we were now. I must have spent a bad connection on one of these riser cards or something. Maybe it wasn't quite seated as well as it should have been. I've reset all this and now it's come back up to where we were before. So that's fine. We can get back to doing our testing. So what we've got to do now is preset mode. Hey, started doing something. There's signals on the screen. Test select. It's actually doing something now. That's interesting. Okay. Um, define test number, we want 122, enter, 
want to run continuous test and I have to test on some test points which at least now on the front of the car so I can get to it so here we go, we're supposed to have 10 MHz on TP302 and that's what we've got it's not a very clean waveform but then what's in the service manual also looks a bit jagged as well so I think this is, it's what is supposed to be expected I think that's fine it's TP100, that is fine so TP501 is fine that's also okay so this is TP101 and that is also looking okay four divisions between them yep that's right so no issues there so the next thing we've got to do is do input which I've done CalSig here we'll turn that on then we've got the frequency and define center and 50 kilohertz Now I'll we'll check some more signals. So this is the waveform we're getting at TP701 and that is a two division high. Yes, one division wide. Yes, that's looking fine. Nothing wrong with that. So this is uh, TP502 and that also looks fine. Nothing wrong there. So this is TP, well, U702 pin 2. I'm getting some interesting triggering going on here, but um, waveform is the correct height. It's about four divisions apart. Sometimes I don't know. Is it just been pulsing? Is this one different? Not sure. We're getting pulses. Hmm. There might be something different there. Let's just go to a slightly longer time. So that we're getting various packets. Now I don't know whether they're like intentionally like that or whether that's an error. It doesn't seem to specify. Let's go to a longer time frame. Let's just catch a load of data here. Then I might do a single trigger. So that's what we're getting there. It does seem to be missing the odd pulse here or there. The question is, is that normal? So we've got some missing over here and there. But it's otherwise consistent, but there's the odd one here or there which is missing. Is that a sign of a data problem, I wonder? It's always two pulses that are missed and they're always with a pulse in between them. So I'm just keeping probing and just watching it to see what happens. So there's a couple of pulses missed there. So I'm not sure if it's just bad probing and all the wiser cards or there's some marginal trigger level there somewhere or something. Fortunately it's got quite a long acquisition time there you go, it's me with bad probing there. So I've set some more probes up. I'm actually probing on U201 on pin 5 and pin 6. Pin 6 is what connects up to U702 pin 2 we were testing before when we had those missing pulses. So now I've actually connected up to U201 which is where it comes from which is a flip-flop, u is a flip-flop and you can see here we still have missing pulses and we're getting them on both sides of the flip-flop so is it the bad flip-flop or is it signals driving that which we need to track down so I need to keep on looking so I've now hooked up onto pin 2 of u one and that's on channel 2 which is the pink one so here is the output which goes to U702 and this is the D pin, pin 2 of U201. You will see the D pin is missing here. Hmm. So it looks like the flip flop's okay because it's doing what it's told to do. So I have to track back that data pin now. So now hooked up to U203 pin 12. Which is going back a bit further. Yellow trace is still the original, but the pink one is now that to U203. And you can see it's matching there as well. So that missing pulse is coming through from there. Now for some reason it's got a lot worse suddenly. I don't know why that is. 
a bit curious. It's definitely tied in, so I've eliminated U201. U203, maybe it's okay as well. That's an input to a flip flop. Let's make some stuff here. I said the relay is clicking just now, it's doing something. The pink line is now the clear input, which is pin 1 of U203. So whenever the clear fires, it sends that pulse out to U702. So it looks like all of the flip flops are doing what they're supposed to do. It appears that way. So it could well be that this is normal. Maybe this is absolutely nothing wrong. It's just the way it is. Still curious though. But anyway, I'll just leave this for now and come back, move on to other stuff. And just keeping in mind that this may not be an issue or it may be an issue. I really don't know yet.